All right, all right, ladies and gents, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Alex here, and uh, I'm here with Suchi Smita. Hi. Is Hi, that Alex. correct? Yes, Hi. perfect. Thank you for pronouncing it correctly, no, because people struggle. Exactly, <laughs> I know, and I, and I think I struggled as well first time when I, saw, yeah. uh, when I said your name. For and, sure. And uh, I don't want to repeat the same <laughs> mistake. <laughs> um, it's good to have you here. Uh, welcome to the desert. Thank you so much. And uh, <laughs> how is it? How is everything? everything's good so far like uh, recovered from before because when i just came here it was a struggle for me um, then with time then now we have started flying to calcutta so i'm going home almost every month so i think that's what's keeping me like that's what it's making me keep going with it keep going with it you are from calcutta yes all right so the first indian i have on the podcast the first person from india on my podcast is you so uh, you are very, very welcomed here. And by the way, uh, I think 12%, around 12% of my audience is from India. And that makes it the highest amount of people watching the channel. Uh, how, how, um, how do you find the job so far? It's good. Like uh, if you compare really with uh, different jobs, like a typical nine to five job, yeah. people, are, pe people still do enjoy that. However, for me, it's like, I started my first job with flying as well. Like I, yeah. I feel like I cannot do anything else apart from flying. So yeah. for me, definitely sometimes, uh, to be honest, I creep for it that early morning, so many uh, people to serve and everything. But still, then I meet people like you who I'm flying with, amazing crew like you. Then it makes, you know, it changes my mind that no, I want to keep going it. I, I don't know how to receive compliments like that. It's just <laughs> absolutely crazy. Uh, uh, thank you so much. I, I really appreciate it. Uh, we did fly together and we've flown together recently on the Airbus A380, which yes. was the first flight inaugural of the 380. Yes. I think everybody that's following our Instagrams, they noticed. Yes, um, and it was amazing. Like we had fun. We were scared first like we were a little bit nervous you know everyone was new yeah absolutely so when you fly a different plane like a new plane it's just uh, it can be a bit um, interesting because nobody used to is nobody is used to it right yes and then everybody's new you know the galley operator sees exactly. the galley and is like okay what am i doing in this galley where is what's what? happening where is what where is my water with my cart Perfect. where is my galley amenities or whatever and um, yeah it's uh, it's a new kind of it's a new vibe, a new experience, and sometimes it can be a bit, uh, a bit problematic, you know, until yeah. you get used to it. But uh, nevertheless, we had uh, our flight. We had some pictures. You were very photogenic, by the way. Thank you. You are. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, we definitely had fun, and it was a challenging flight, right? It was. I mean, it, it was, was like in the upstairs and business class and first. Like I, th I feel economy was still better than yeah. when I went up. I think to take something from upstairs yeah. so just to have a look how is everything okay. everybody was I, running around right i literally got scared i say okay no it's not it's not a good time to yeah. poke in here because they can they can shout at me because <laughs> of course they all were like literally super busy so yeah, yeah but yeah. economy i think we did very well very, on our exactly first exactly and i was working in economy on that flight so for the those of you that don't know uh, she's referring to the double decker the airbus a380 and when she said upstairs that means, means literally upper upstairs deck, like upper deck you yeah. have literally two stairs from one from the front part of the aircraft and another is from the back part of the aircraft and literally you go upstairs exactly. and you have the first class business class and we have our residence up there exactly quite luxurious like it's really it's nice. Very nice it's really nice like i really like the plane and it's very weird because even the turbulence you, I, you don't feel it that much yeah take take off and landing right what exactly. do you feel on takeoff and landing exactly. no for me i feel like when the gear comes out it's it's a little heavier like the sound yeah. and everything yeah. because i was m3 i was yeah, right on the m3, wings you can feel oh the my gears god it was, the yes plane, yeah. it was but apart from that it's um it's actually even people passengers they really love the aircraft so while leaving, I want a few of them, they say just like, we fly to London quite frequently with Etihad. It's always nice to fly with Etihad, but this is a plane that we really like it. I mean, you know, comparison to how when we fly Boeing to London, it's, it's I feel it's uh, very hectic. Like any, yeah. everybody knows that London is how hectic the flight is because it's a continuous, like nonstop service. True. But 380, it's like, I think it's air conditioned maybe it's it's very cold in the aircraft so people literally just eat and they just relax they just sleep mm -hmm. like when the air condition is like it's really cold inside you just want to sleep that's true although that can be adjusted 
<laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> I think it's a great plane. And uh, although we are having a very tedious roster, we just fly London nowadays. You two, how many Londons do you have this month? Abu Dhabi, uh, London, five. And back. Five. Five Londons. Wow. But they removed one of my Londons and they gave them, they're sending me to Egypt. I mean, Cairo. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. Is it a layover? Yes. Oh, God. nice. I did it before as well once. Uh, went to Pyramid and all. So That's amazing. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, um, I had Cairo once in my roster, but unfortunately I had to call sick. Oh. I was sick. I was dying. I was like, my nose was like all over the place. My my throat was Now you shouldn't be flying that time and it's very sensitive. No, I advise everybody, you know, even when we talk with our colleagues, like, hey, if you don't feel well for the flight, just 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 call call sick. sick. Exactly. Like, otherwise, you know, if you are sick, I'm a kind person or all the crew members are kind person. When we see somebody sick in the flight, we would not let that person work right yeah exactly and unfortunately if you cannot do your part then rest of the, that thing comes on the other crew exactly like so other have people to do will like, work have to exactly. work harder because you know you're not feeling well on the flight exactly. and, and then, then you fall sick because you work exactly. extra extra and then you call you had to call sick in the layover Anyways, imagine you will so. call sick yeah so it's it's yeah, not it's, difficult. Uh, it's not good and oftentimes you know flying i always say flying takes a toll on your body flying you know it's it it it's you not know, an it, easy job. It's not an easy job. And uh, all those night shifts, the ability, the fact that you don't get your sleep as much as you should, or, you know, you, it may weaken your immunity system oftentimes. And then, you know, you might get s- more sick than you used to before exactly. flying. Uh, until unless you take care of yourself. Very Absolutely. Nice. Absolutely, you have to. Everybody knows how good Alex is, like physical activity and And, everything. uh, Only sometimes. So, yeah, something that you should do, like him, to stay fit and, you know, just. Inshallah. Activate, yes. No, but but really, even if I, you know, I'm still struggling sometimes with um, with being sick or stuff like this because uh, despite the fact that I'm going to the gym often and I try to have a relatively healthy diet, you know, it still happens. Like recently I lost my voice on the flight. And I was like, mm, okay, what's happening? Things you like are this, in the yeah. pressurized cabin for so long. Like yeah. it's, it's definitely not healthy, but it, it, it is what it is. It is what it is. And we have to perform our duty because it is our duty and our <laughs> job. So there's a, a few things to adjust uh, Well, you know, coming here in UAE. But how did you adjust uh, coming over from India? I took a lot of time to be honest because in India, you know, it's for me, uh, especially I'm from uh, I'm from Bengal, like Kolkata yes. is uh, from West Bengal. So that part is very much, uh, the culture is very rich there. Yes. Like if you say, if you're talking to a Bengali girl, it's it's like she can, she, she knows how to dance. She knows how to uh, sing. She knows how to recite. She knows, it's like, she knows how to paint. Like it's like that. Those, the expectations are like this. Okay. So even I was involved with uh, dancing, painting back home when I was in school and stuff. So even when I was flying there also, I used to do it side by side. But after coming here, because I used to miss my family and friends so much and I did not want to do anything, just flying, coming back, sleeping and flying. So it took me a lot of time. And then when they started flying to Calcutta and I started going home every month, then it become a little bit better. And now I feel like, okay, this is... This is what it is and this is like perfectly okay. Yeah, now I'm adjusted. It took me time. It I think still I'm adjusting. Okay. I'm still not totally adjusted, but still trying, trying, trying. It takes a while to adjust with the flying hours and everything. Everything. And like, new country. And yeah. I have never stayed away from my family. Okay. So this is the first time away. First time. So when I was in, in I was flying for Indigo Airlines. Yes. Uh, for training I had to go to Delhi for three months. And that's all. And that too, I used to come back home every Saturday, Sunday. Mm-hmm. So like I, I would, tr- I would finish my training in the mo- in the evening around five, and I, I had to take the seven hour, seven o'clock, seven p.m. flight to come back to Calcutta. So that's that 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 much homesick I was, and I am still. So Indigo, how much time have you spent there? How many? Yeah, years, I flew months? for four years. Like I completed four years. I started five, fifth year, and then I joined uh, Etihad. Four years in Indigo. That's really impressive. <laughs> okay, how would you say the experience was in Indigo? I don't know pros and cons. You know, it depends how much in depth you want to go. But uh, what would you? So say a general feel about this the airline. question i'm i'm really being asked f- quite frequently that uh, which one do you prefer more etihad or indigo yeah i cannot compare and i think the it's like comparing between messi and ronaldo oh you really? cannot you cannot compare 
They both are different. Okay. They both are amazing in their own places. For me, I have learned the ABCD of aviation from Indigo. Mm-hmm. So you, you cannot, you cannot say that that's bad or good. What yes. if the basic aviation is same everywhere, right? Like Alpha, Bravo, Charlie is same everywhere in all it's the aviation it's industry. It's so what I have learned from Indigo is something that's making me a better crew to perform in Etihad. Etihad is making me learn more in depth. Yes. But Indigo has uh, taught me the basic. Like if you do not know the ABCD, you cannot, you know, make a word. Right. So yes. it's like that. In Indigo, the best part was I was staying home. It was definitely a smaller base than Etihad. Like, you know, everyone, like how a 380 is now. Like, yes. I know I'm fl- flying with the frequent crew quite fre- like same crew quite frequently. So yes. in Indigo, it was like that. So and four years was a long time. So knew each other and, um, you know, and you I was based exactly I was based out of Calcutta. So it's it's it, it was home, to be honest. It was home. <laughs> It's okay. Yeah, so don't sorry. stay too close because yeah. then it goes so <laughs> home. Uh, yeah. So uh, so it was home. That's yeah. good. That's a nice feeling to the have. Cons were like uh, four sectors almost every day. No way. Yes. Almost and every day. Almost every day. And that too, the four sectors were not like how we do it here. Like Abu Dhabi, the mom, the mom, Abu Dhabi, Doha. Like it's sm- yeah. s- short sectors, right? But there it used to be like maybe two sec, two hours flight. Oh, okay. Like you do, you know Bangalore, right? Yes. So Kolkata, Bangalore is a flight for uh, two hours, two hours and 15 minutes probably. I forgot. Kolkata, Bangalore, Bangalore, Mangalore, Mangalore, Bangalore, Bangalore, Kolkata. Like oh, it's just a, wow. just an example. So yeah. yeah. So that a, was a good 12 hours at least. Yeah. 12, and, the ro- and the uh, layover time was like, you know, if you are giving me 24 hours layover, it's the longest layover for me. Wow. After coming here, it's like, I, when I tell my friends, my ex-colleagues that, okay, I'm going for a 30 hours layover, which is very short for us, right? 30 hours? Yeah, like, you, it's you like the 48 hours ones, the two-day yeah. layovers are what we exactly. like in Etihad, or three days, exactly. you're really lucky. Nine, 76 hours layover. Yeah, wow. So that was like something cons, like uh, there was like, you do four sectors, you reach, you eat, sleep, you wake up, and you go for the flight again. Yeah. So that was a bit difficult. Wow. But you you managed, and uh, how was the yeah. weekly schedule? Let's see how many days you were working out of the week. Yeah, it, like it's almost same like here. Like here, you still have four days consecutive off, right? You get it. At sometimes, least I get it. Sometimes, get yes, it. Yeah. yes. But there, no, you cannot. You do not get that four days. Even even after COVID, they cut off our offs and they made it four offs in a month. Okay. Just four. Yes. Nah. Just yes. That that's you true. You can't. No, yes. Okay. Before we used to have eight offs when I joined back in 2018 and uh, t- from 2018 till COVID. Yes. Like COVID did change our life a lot, like in every aspect, right? So they cut off our offs and it was just a four offs. And I think now they have came back as far as I've heard from my uh, friends. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it was difficult with four offs. Like it's like six days consecutive you're flying and then you have a day off and then again you have another six days block. So. That's uh, not easy and that it can be not. quite tiring. And you Definitely. did it for a while, right? Yeah, yeah, four years. Yeah. But when I started flying, it wasn't like this. It was a bit more relaxed than how it was now. Mm-hmm. But yeah, now it's, it's. I think, you know, now Indigo things are changing as well. They are really, they have merged with Turkish Airlines and now they have started flying 777, by the way. Indigo so. started flying 777. Yes. I did not know about that. Yes. That's pretty cool. From actually. Delhi. Um, I don't know which destinations they are flying, but yeah, they start. Triple seven Indigo. I can imagine like in Europe, like Ryanair going triple seven. I was like, what? <laughs> the hell? Like, I, I just cannot comprehend that. Or, you know, there were some memes online with uh, Ryanair flying the Airbus A380. Like, imagine the Ryanair logo on a 380 and come with 900 passengers. That will be just crazy, right? Oh my God. <laughs> And, you know, uh, the thing I want to share with you is like a uh, passenger profile. We are really concerned about that. When they fly, even especially t- uh, I observed like the same destinations when they're flying with Etihad, they are, they are so different. Yes. And when they would fly their own f- own countries, like the domestic, they are so different. Really? Yeah. So behavior changes and yes. passenger wise. Yeah. I mean, you know, they, they can shout at us. Like it happened with me a lot of times. People have shouted at me. In Indigo. Really? But the same kind of people, they would not. 
Oh, in- interesting. I'm sorry to hear that. I hope it's not a common occurrence, <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> if you are not a crew if you haven't cried in the lavatory, oh. at least once in your career. So, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the struggles ladies and gents and you know sometimes you do have those kind of stories and you know i i try to keep all things positive on my channel all the times but you know sometimes you have to to face the truth you know our job is serving customers and it's not really easy oftentimes it can be daunting challenging you're working with people people can be mean people can be rude people have issues people maybe they come with baggage from home you know something is in their mind and then they might make your uh, day worse right and of course it's it's not really pleasant it's not a pleasant thing right who you oftentimes ask yourself okay am i fit for this role you know what am i doing here what am i doing with my life when this kind of things happen yeah. but those things unfortunately they do happen and oftentimes you can see it on social media you know different sites you know you have those angry especially passengers here, yes. and everything whoa shouting and yeah. everything it's especially when amongst the crew sometimes they are not rude but it's just because you know in in our airline it's yes. like a mal- multinational airline right so yes people from different countries different part of the world we are working together so sometimes for for you what for me maybe this is not rude but for the other person it could be absolutely it's because uh, for me in my country maybe it's very common it's normal right yes. for you it might not be so that's something that we really need to look after at all point of time so that's why like in etihad is like respect is one of the you know in our briefing we always say this just no attitude and respect everyone absolutely. if you cannot respect yourself your colleagues you can never respect your passengers absolutely i completely agree with this you know respect should be a thing but you just mentioned something that's uh, really a truth which is you know cultural differences exactly. and um, i want to tell you something about you know i had a flight once i think it was a airbus a321 yeah. and uh, it was i think it was an indian sector mm-hmm. like some somewhere in india and you know flight went smooth everything was okay at disembarkation i was greeting the passengers like goodbye take care you know thank you for the flight and one gentleman he looked at me and he told me thank you so much for the flight i hope you soon get a better job and i was thinking <laughs> really? yeah i was you know in etihad maybe a few years back like i still remember this kind of stuff you were um, new that time yeah pretty new like, i was pretty yeah. new i would say and i was thinking like okay well, why like why did he tell what me what made that? him like, fe- feel yeah, like yeah, that yeah, yeah, exactly <laughs> like you know the flight was smooth everything was okay uh, i didn't have any conversation with this gentleman prior to this but you know he just thanked me for the flight and he wished me oh i hope you you get a better job soon and probably this is one of those cultural things yeah could be that from india you know i'm i'm not sure which part of india was it north south you remember Asia. where where are you flying where um, are you flying yeah i, I don't, don't remember, remember the destination okay. i know i just know it was an indian sector so maybe it's one of those culture things in which yeah. if you for example as a cabin crew you serve the passenger you kind of you know fall under as a category kind of stuff i'm not really sure so they to be honest india is a very hospitable country i know however uh, you know still the generations like people it's from the older generation older generations yeah, still yeah, they yeah. cannot you know, you know really ex- accept the thing that um, my granddaughter or my whatever yes they will go and serve others so yeah 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 but this is not something what it is about right of course not so yeah even in the when they are going to a hotel or a restaurant or a flight and they get an amazing service they at, at the end of the day they are happy absolutely so i think there are very few people in the earth who get the responsibility to make others others life good or make others smile for yes. a day sometimes yes. we actually make their day right so still they're accepting it even yesterday i just want to share this incident i was flying to abu dhabi to damam damam is uh, in saudi i'm not sure but the gentleman was uh, could be my agent of my grandfather yes so i was flying 320 and in 320 it's like a space is a very less for the big bags right so yes. we always uh, request them to keep their small bags under the seat and i go extra mile and i tell them sir please uh, just wait until we finish the boarding we keep all the big bag and then i will settle your bag yes so i told him he had a packet with uh, food and i was definitely not aware that that is food and in india we really worship food we really worship this uh, books and everything we do it so he got offended because i told him to keep it under the seat uh. i was like i'm so sorry i was not aware of that is food okay then just wait for us 
sometimes then I will put your it's a very small bag yeah, in front yeah. of a big bag because we really don't have space and this is what we have been instructed to do to request them to keep the bag under the seat and he got offended okay. he started shouting and stuff it was early in the morning I was just starting my day you know <laughs> if I think that okay, oh my day is gone it would be yeah, gone yeah. but again at the end of the day you have another passenger who will be like thank you so much for the hospital like you know hospitality you, you guys are sacrificing a lot you guys are not doing something easy that's like it's a balanced That's to true. be honest so it's <laughs> it's it's good and bad you know it's everywhere I feel. absolutely it's everywhere so uh, it's been six years for me now flying so what I you can do it. is okay what will be my response in relationship to this behavior or what will be my my uh, my mindset about it uh, can I go over it you know will I be nice and polite and get over the situation or maybe solve the situation and move on that's the appropriate thing to do you exactly. know you don't have to get stuck in that kind of a mindset or you know get upset exactly. or get you know dramatic about it because life moves on you know incidents exactly. happen and exactly. that's it and you, you actually forget after a few you days forget, actually. but absolutely. for that moment maybe it was in my mind if now you know this this profession has really taught me a lot of things and one of the things is just like that it's okay you will I, be happy I, yes if you want to be happy <laughs> I apology. It's my mistake. <laughs> I accept it. I'll just, I'll just, just okay. Just be calm. You just gave a glass of water, and okay, you are correct. Yeah. If you want, if you are happy with it, you are correct. If you want to be right, be right. Right. It's fine. I don't mind. Yeah. I don't mind. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. No, that makes sense because at that the makes your day, life easy. Yes. Actually, in life also, not about only flight. It's in life also. It makes actually easier than just accept it. And, okay. Exactly. <laughs> exactly and you know your your mental health is the most important thing here obviously and that's it if you can make it okay by you know letting go of things that's it you know you'll that's be happy very important. and um, yeah. it's very important of course they will understand eventually you know they will understand eventually and maybe that day they will regret and i don't really wait for somebody to regret but it has happened with me maybe with my mom i i shouted at her mm -hmm. after a few hours she was behaving with me just like a normal person like and i i regret yeah like, why did i behave like, yeah. that's why you know you just be, I'm, especially my mom always says that somebody who behaves with you badly you have to give your best behavior to that person so then they will feel sorry anyways exactly that's exactly. True. exactly and that's, that's, that's the best thing like you cannot beat anyone you cannot say bad words to anyone that's that's going to harm yourself better you just you know you'll you're the bigger person here exactly. then, and it's, that's it like that makes your life easy. That's oh, it. well said. Well <laughs> said, Suchi Smita. By the way, how do friends call you? Suchi. Suchi, right? Yes. Okay. You can call me Suchi. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Awesome. He uh, is actually pronouncing so nicely. Even Indians do struggle to pronounce my name. Really? It's like kind of a tongue twister. Anyways, what's your favorite aircraft apart from the 380? I think it's it's a new experience, so we're yeah. still developing. Uh, but still, I like it. Okay. And uh, 787. 787, yeah. Uh, dash 9. That's definitely nine. it has a bunk it has Best a bunk <laughs> and it has a bunk and it has you know um, a manageable amount of seats yes <laughs> good galley good bunk galley. as in guys it's um, it's where we rest in our ultra long haul flight when we fly to the america australia we yeah. get our rest for four hours that's where we sleep but 787-9 does not have a bunk so dash 10 Dash 10, sorry. Dash 9 is my favorite. Did yes. I say the other thing? Dash 10. <laughs> uh, dash 9. Dash 10, yeah. yeah. The dash, dash 9 has a bunk. Dash 10 doesn't, doesn't have, have a bunk. bunk. Yeah. yeah. So we, we, we appreciate when we can rest. <laughs> we can, can you sleep on the flights? No, I struggle. Even really? at my home, actually, you know, because of the sleep cycle oh. that we have now, I take good two hours to get a proper sleep. Like, so four hours rest. I'm getting two hours to get my sleep and then two hours. Not really. I don't get sleep. Wow. I don't know how it's going to be in 380 bunks because it's quite big and spacious. But um, yeah, previously when I just started flying here in Etihad, I used to get sleep still, but now I do struggle. You So you're in a kind of a struggle with yes, sleep period yes, of time. Yes, okay. Yeah. How about at home? You know, at home night? I struggle sometimes. Really? So yeah, it's like, I mean, lying on the bed. The bad habit is I check on phone. That's one of the biggest <coughs> issues of our freaking generation. And you know yes. it's true and everybody knows it. And, you know, you, you check your phone all the time. Okay, let's see, who, you know, what's happening on social media. Yeah. What kind of reels and TikTok. We just don't do anything. We just yeah, keep scrolling, scrolling and doing nothing. It's sleep depriving you. That's yeah. for sure. I mean, it's also the blue light. Did you know that? Like the we blue all lights. know that it's so bad, but yeah. still we do it. 
Yeah, yeah. If only we could do all the good decisions and leave the bad decisions away, but uh, that's actually not really possible. Same like ordering food at freaking and, 2 a.m. And imagine the AIs are so strong now. It's like you're feeling hungry and you're suddenly getting a popper from Talabar. Yeah. Are you hungry? You want- I swear that's so true. You get a message notification for delivery app exactly when you're hungry. Like exactly. I don't know what's imagine. happening. Or when you shouldn't eat. Yeah. But, you know, it's just kind of comes along. So... Okay, what's happening? Why did I get this uh, notification? Or let's say you talk about the subject, you talk yeah, about the comes. t-shirt that you want during the day, you'll have a pop out. Okay, yes. this is a nice uh, it's blue the t-shirt, whatever. It's like, wow, okay, this this thing is real. They, they are <laughs> listening to us. It's a conspiration. We are being tracked all the time. Yes, we are being watched. Yes. Watched. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty scary if you think about it. But um, it's... You know, it's the society we live in. I think you cannot. It's just gonna be a thing, and I'm really worried about this whole AI thing that's gonna happen yeah. in the future. It's really interesting because I have this YouTube channel, and now, for example, I'm using a tool. I just put the whole the whole podcast in this tool, and this tool can just give me uh, reels from it, like short okay. videos yeah. with subtitles and everything set for me. I swear. You don't have to do anything. I have, I cannot, I don't have to do anything. Just uh, see the video and accept it and download it. Oh my God. That's it. Oh it's my God. so crazy. And the AI knows what kind of things topic you it, like. Yeah. And the interesting topic of our conversation, exactly. the AI will know it. And I was just thinking, how is this, you know, but it's just a bit uh, creepy in a sense. You know what Definitely. I mean? Definitely. Like, uh, see, you are using it in a good way. Yes. But rest of the people, they are not. Somebody can use it. No, misuse weird. it. Yeah, misuse and mostly it. people are doing that. I, I would say, you know. Oh well, that's pessimistic. <laughs> but probably. Yeah, I mean, there's just an incident that in Instagram. Yeah. So there, I don't know who is that person. My profile is open, so that person comes and likes my prof- my stories, everything that I upload, the story. And he has a very ugly uh, DP. Okay, the d- display picture is very ugly, okay. and the name is same, same okay. name. The name is, okay, I don't want to say it now. I'll tell you later. Yeah. So I am blocking that person every time and they're creating another profile like every single day. But that's very tough to create a profile every single day. I have no idea how that person is doing, but wow. they're doing it. And it's the same name that they're make, making it with and the same picture. Wow. That's so I was like, interesting. Just, just be in your, like, you know, just, just let people live their life peacefully. And just leave your life peace. Why to do all these things? Well, you know, the internet is very broad. The yeah. people are a lot of them. And, you know, everybody has their own kind of mind sometimes. And the exactly. mind goes different paths. Path. I guess. Yeah. One of the things I wanted to ask you is, do you miss your home? Do you miss your family? But I don't know. How do you feel like being apart from it for a long time? Definitely miss my friends and family and kind of a ambivert person. And I take a lot of time to make friends. So making a new friends, I feel like, you know, it's for everybody that after a certain age, you cannot really make friends. Yeah. So yeah, that's how struggle. But some of the nights, some of the days, I feel really peaceful that mm-hmm. no one is waking me up. No one's uh, just, you know, watching movies. Uh, no one's bothering. If I want to eat, I eat. If I don't want to eat, I don't want to eat. Yeah, that's it's it's, it's that's balance. Good. I yeah, always wanted yeah. to leave away, but yeah, definitely miss home a lot. Yeah, a lot. I feel the same thing sometimes going home. Like you just you have to do some things, and sometimes you're not in the mood, and is this whole family thing to make others happy? Others yeah, put others in the front. Exactly, and and sometimes you know you have relatives over, but not all the time you're in you the mood exactly. to have this whole relative situation but i know what you mean but uh, but you know staying away it's like i tell my friends as well that um, once in a life everyone should do it yeah you are one person right you actually at the end of the day there is no one for you y- your path you have to walk by yourself so staying away from your home it makes you a different complete person i feel i'm a person who would always be scared of bank works all the paperwork but trust me the situation they made me learn every single thing every single thing so Fair enough. starting from cooking i knew cooking but uh, you know the everyday meal 
you have to make your meal before the flight so that was yeah. my mom would do it like i would land from a flight my mom would call what do you want to eat that's so sweet i know when i just started flying in at you know, trust me alex i would come back from cbc to mazdar my apartment yeah i would cry in the bus and that time we had masks so i would be sitting at the back of the bus nobody would be watching me so i can just cry because i i miss my mom's call to ask me that what you want to eat yeah <laughs> wow that's a big reveal right here oh. <laughs> i'm so sorry to hear <laughs> that okay. but yeah you have a great point you know mm -hmm. many of us probably we're used to our family our mother's cooking you know and everything being set for us you know probably you know the dishes that this or that was taking care of the laundry and everything you're just you know it's just the baby of the family and you're being babied all the time and that's very and all of a sudden cool one morning nice. you're just an adult and yes. you are living apart like now if you're dying also you have to go and <laughs> give your laundry otherwise you cannot <laughs> wear it next day in the flight that's, that's a fair point yeah, yeah. that's um, when i go home my mom always feeds me like mm -hmm. she will never let me feed myself she will always feed me and mm -hmm. i have an excuse that i have my nails okay you help me to feed makes oh, yeah. sense i like indian food it's oh, very yeah. delicious yeah. i wouldn't say it's very healthy disclaimer here i mean no, no, some no. things are some things i'm not i'm not saying not but uh the spices man, are they wow. are healthy yeah. the spices you if you really actually go through the old indian books yeah so much there like, is some some a lot of sense to to some yeah, things, yeah. even we when we eat with our hands th yes. that has a that has a science behind it that the nerves of your hands that mm -hmm. that has nerves so we basically prefer to eat sitting on the floor mm -hmm. the traditional has, way yes the traditional everything if you go by the book actually it has like ayurveda you know so it has the meaning i don't know probably yeah. i just follow blindly yeah, but yeah, uh, yeah. does been sometimes i'm interested to know what is the meaning or why am i doing this then no oh, yes it makes sense wow yeah and it's you know it's interesting because it's shared with quite a few cultures for example um uh, even arabic culture i think they have this sitting down kind probably, of thing yeah. you know on the floor on the carpet whatever whatever yeah, and the eating mat. food and also with hands with oftentimes hand. so it's something that we europeans were not really you know yes cultured it. on but uh, <laughs> yeah you know sometimes i think oh we discovered this and that yeah but it's not really like that like <laughs> listen there's more things beyond the curtain right and um there is something to take out from uh, each culture that's for sure yeah. every that's culture sure. has something that to learn and it's beautiful actually you yeah. know when we work with so many people uh so i uh, my portuguese friend she's a very close friend of mine yeah, so i invited yeah. her over for a lunch yes. i cooked the authentic bengali food and uh, even my city like kolkata is very famous for food in india among like there is a lot of debate about the biryani especially mm -hmm. hyderabad's biryani is the best but no it's kolkata's biryani <laughs> <laughs> my biryani is the better best. than your biryani <laughs> <laughs> even we put potato in the biryani and that's what it makes it more aromatic i feel oh, wow. you know? Mm -hmm. When you're going for Calcutta Lever, I should make you a list where you should eat mm. the sweets. Oh my God, the fish! Yo, listen, oh my God. I I had Indian sweets quite a few times before, and I don't want to have them because I'll get fat. <laughs> no, I'm I'm just being serious. I like them. Don't get me wrong, but I mm. want to stay away. I want to stay away <laughs> from that kind of stuff. Once in a blue moon, it's okay. My gym will be ruined. <laughs> once in a blue moon it's okay yeah, so juliana i mean uh, she is my portuguese friend so i i cooked for her and she i i taught her how to eat with hands and she was so cute and Aww. she was like we put it like this and she was like this <laughs> <laughs> so it was very cute and nice that's nice but she liked the food as well for sure but i i made less spicy for her okay because she cannot eat spice i can eat spicy but at a certain point i know i'm i'm like on fire and uh, i feel like there's a threshold in which you I struggle cannot... the next day uh, okay maybe that's too hey listen listen we're we're a family friendly podcast here but still no 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 i i i know what you mean yes you can struggle the next day um but what i meant is <laughs> at the same time it's it's at a threshold where okay it's so spicy that i cannot get through the taste mm -hmm. as much you know what i mean so okay you are more concentrated about the heart yeah so yeah hot. yeah like what's your favorite indian food by the way um i i like parathas with butter chicken yeah oh, i knew uh, it I, everybody's like i think all the westerners are oh butter chicken butter chicken. <laughs> but no i like biryani as well um the sweets i like those there's like some bowls that are very sweet uh gulab jamun yeah 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 the one we get in the flight 
I mean, not that one particular, but yeah, that kind of stuff. I really like them, generally yeah. speaking. Gulab but jam. they're so sweet. They are. They are. Uh, so much of calories. You have like a syrup on top of them. When I go bar. home, actually, I my mom will be like, keep your baggage in Abu Dhabi for food and just come. Like, I eat rice thrice a day when I go home. Wow. But my mother is the same. I go home and Alex, I will put you sarmale and, <laughs> and meat and all of that kind of Romanian stuff, you know. Like she wouldn't let me go back in Abu Dhabi without food. And I tell her, without Mom, getting, yeah, exactly. Like I, I have maybe other stuff to put in my bag. I don't, exactly. I and not carry this And just food. not that you are eating at home and getting fat. You are getting it along in Abu Dhabi. Yeah, exactly. So for me, my mom cooks and she she sends me. So after coming back to Abu Dhabi uh, for a week, I don't have to cook and I have to eat those same cal- like high calorie food. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay, mom stuff. What but do? our parents, you know, they probably love us and this is yeah. one of the this ways. This is way they, of show. Uh, yeah, show exactly. It. That's true. That's true. Yeah. yeah. And I know we have to appreciate it as much as possible and, you know, show them love as much as possible because they're probably not going to be here forever. Long time, yeah. And, um, yeah, we have to show them love as as much as possible. Yeah. Yeah. Like, only person we get by our side when nobody is there, to be honest. Exactly. So, this is, that's something we learn with time, I think. You know, now the baby, like, kids 15, 16 even when I was 15, 16, yes. I wouldn't take you like, okay, don't come with me. I, there are my friends. But now I, I, I just look for my mom's company rather than my friends. It's called growing up, I think. Yeah. And knowing that your family is it's one more, of the, you know, pri- pri- like it's, it's the top in the priority list. Absolutely. Yeah. Because friends change. We all know this. Friends change. You, you make a new friend. Maybe sometime soon, you know, it'll just be over. You will stop speaking for some reason. It's not even that, you know, you hate each other or not, exactly. whatever. Exactly. It's True. just distance and change. True. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, does that happen to you? Like, it happened to you? Absolutely. And I think it's it's normal. You know, people, the, their lives this just adjust to certain situations. Maybe many people, they get married, right? Yeah. You, you get different friends. You get different tastes in the things that you want to do you and grow up differently yeah. your yeah everything and you grow apart from each other and at the point you'll just like you maybe you you accustom some new habits that i'm not aware of exactly. because since we are living apart and it's not easy to be friends through video calling and stuff yeah. like uh, with it's your family difficult. yes yes because that's different but with your friends through video calling i don't see it so uh so possible you know with friends you have to do things see each other kind of stuff yeah so that's why like we start looking for friends in where we are living but for me it doesn't work to be honest like mm-hmm. i have very limited friends in my life like where whom i i can't really call everyone my friends right just those whom i have grown up with literally and uh, like you know now i go home every month it's nothing has changed for me my friends no though actually those who i call friend no they haven't changed that's that's really, really good. i'm very lucky for you know this kind of friends that's really good. I'm happy to hear that. And you know, it's weird because sometimes people nowadays, they confuse friends with acquaintances. Exactly. Like, okay. hey, I have this friend that this and that. You just met that person. person. It's exactly. not really your friend. Friendship takes time, takes effort. Oh, it takes a it's, it takes a whole life, I feel, sometimes. Yeah. You know? like- friends and acquaintances, two different things. What is your favorite destination, by the way, so far? Uh, my country. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Apart from your country? Yeah. Like, uh, I don't know, traveling, I will, uh, uh, yeah. layover. India is such a country that if you, it, it's there, it's written that if you actually finish traveling the whole India, you don't really need to go anywhere. So when I was in back India, I, I have some few destinations as well. But in India, I'm telling that there are some part of Himalayas. It's just beautiful. Like if you have heard about the name about the Kashmir. Yes. Himachal Pradesh. There are a few, like I used to do trekking, but like I did few trekkings there. So it, some of the days and apart from that apart from my country if you say i really like spain spain i really mm-hmm. like new york i mean in usa new york is something i really like appreciate because there is a reason for it nobody cares what others doing like the That's life so is true. so fast there like That's literally so true you are sitting right next to me i wouldn't even i don't even have a time to look at you yeah right so yeah like people do not poke yeah. others like in others like new york in a nutshell yeah <laughs> it's 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 like an exciting place it's like a wilderness of the city yeah it's a wild it's exactly city. it's fearless like, yeah you go on times 
square, you know, somebody selling huh. donuts, somebody screaming no. next to it. It's just... And it's normal. It's normal. It's yeah, normal. It's fine. Yeah. It's New York. You can do whatever you want. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Spain is something, yeah, I really like. Mm -hmm. Italy, I haven't explored that much. I've mm -hmm. just been there quite a few times, but I need to have a vacation there. But it's the videos that I have seen in Instagram, that's amazing. Oh my God, I think that's so beautiful. But I cannot say depending on that, I have to go by myself. Yeah, so. but at the same time, you know, videos on Instagram, eh, they can be a bit deceiving sometimes, you know, like you all the time you see those amazing places and sometimes you reach this destination and you're like, okay. Is it really? This is what I've seen? Oh, no, 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 no. no. <laughs> that video, you know, that went viral that... Ooh, uh, something the sound you the reality versus how it is oh yes 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 i know <laughs> yeah so i was vacationing in phuket a few months back uh we were in fifi island it looks so beautiful like it is beautiful like just beautiful but the amount of people are there <sighs> too many tourists oh my god yes yes it's very difficult to say what is your favorite country i mean every you as a cabin crew i don't know whether you will agree with me that you like different things in different countries. Correct. In Spain, I like something. In Italy, I like sm something. In uh, Istanbul, I like something. So it's a bit different question, difficult question to answer. But yeah, I like Spain. Yeah. Uh, whenever somebody asks me, I have kind of the same reaction. I know exactly. I asked you now, but <laughs> nevertheless. So you know what I mean. I like, do know what you mean, yeah. You are all over the, all over the world, like parts of you. And... Uh, yeah, you have different stories for every place yes. and every place is different and you cannot pinpoint. Exactly. All right. So let's talk uh, just a little bit about the interview process. Okay. You applying for Etihad Airways, uh, was, uh, do you, did you find it difficult? If I go back to that particular day, see, I think for an experienced person, you become more confident to deal with people, right? So as I was already flying for four years, so I have, I am used to talking to an unknown person, right? So for me, yes. in front of the interviewer, I was just chit-chatting, to be honest. Mm -hmm. So some, the new joiners, they are, they come in the interview like, I have to get it done. I have no other choice. So when you are a little bit more experienced, you're a little bit more relaxed. First, you have a job already. I'm not, I was not taking it for granted. But if I do not get through, my mind was like, if I don't get through, I will try again. As a new joiner, when I went for the Indigo's interview, it was not my mindset. I have to get it through. Anyhow, my life is over otherwise. So that's something made me, you know, keeping me more relaxed. So my interview went very smooth. Even I met my interviewer after I started flying in Etihad. So nice. yeah, it's, it's nice. Okay. I think experience does help. Absolutely. In here, the rule is 21 years, right? In India, Correct. you can start flying from 18. Would you recommend somebody to start maybe at 18 in an airline in India, for example, and then transition to the Middle East? Would that be a better... That's what I have done. That's what so, you've done, yeah. And I do not regret of doing it. But um, I would say ki when you are flying, keep more things, keep a plan B for yourself. There are people who do not like to fly. So if you do not like to fly, you cannot force yourself to fly because this is not a job that you can do forcefully, to be honest. So sure. you can start if you are really passionate about aviation, you really want to get it, get into it. You can start early. So it's, it's good for you. You, you know, you are in a better position in a very early age, right? If not this, what I want to do next? Or some passion that, you know, some people, they like you like to do YouTube. So you keep doing it along, alongside, right? So, there are people, a lot of stuff they do. So I, I, I would suggest that do not stop it. Like, I know we don't have time. We are so busy. Actually, if you like it, it's nice. If you do not, it's it's not. Fair enough. The job is not for everybody. Not, yeah. It's not everyone's cup of tea. There is so much of emotional turmoil, especially. Especially for girls who are very emotional. Like, I am an emotional fool. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm revealing it. Sorry. But yeah, for me, it's difficult, you know. Okay, at home, nobody talks to me like that. And in the flight, how can I take people like, how can I just tolerate the people talking to me like that? So you need to be very much patient. Like, I think this job makes you that person. To yes. Be I was not this person five, six years back. I was not this patient. I was not... Uh, I would not listen that, okay, if you're telling me anything and everything, now I will first listen to you. And then if I want, I will answer, otherwise I will not. I mm -hmm. think this job makes you a better person as well for to face your life ahead. Makes sense. 
makes sense. So it it does change you. It does. It did. It did. See, your parents see your changes rather than anybody else, right? So she tells me every time that I was not this person. Patient and you tolerate a lot of things. You let things go. You you do not take everything personally, right? When especially you are in the uniform, we have been told in the academy also that they do not know you personally, right? They are just if they are offended or they are upset about something, they are upset about the procedure that we are giving maybe we have to make it better mm-hmm. but do not take things personally put your seat belt on oh i don't want to put my yeah. seat belt on kind of thing yeah when they realize that okay i'm telling because of their own safety then they they do it it's just we have to do our part then rest will be taken care of okay so basically the job of a flight attendant is not really all glamour and beauty but it's more work as well and it can be tough. Yeah, when you talk about glamour, imagine someone is waking you up at uh, 2 o'clock in the morning and asking you to put makeup and go and do <laughs> surf people and take care of their safety, which is the main most important job of ours. Thing, yeah, yeah, most important. So in this sense, it's not glamorous. So I would say. But that's it's, how I it's, told... It's, it's a two-sided coin, right? I think every job has the same thing. I Absolutely. tell my friends that... Everything has a good and a bad side. That's how it is balanced, right? If you like it something a lot, you will not like it for a long time, right? It's one of the things I want to portray on my on my channel. You know, I'm not just talking about only the positives because that will be a bit a bit fake. But I'm yeah. telling you guys, you know, the job has some challenges, as you can see from our conversations, and you have to be prepared for it once you are in it, you know. And uh, yeah, that's basically it. When you are in the uniform, you have to keep a lot of things your baggage is basically you leave it leave at your home and then you come for the flight like you are in the uniform nobody cares how you are feeling emotionally right but still we as a colleague we try to support each other in the galley no matter what happens in the cabin we come and, you know he did that you know he said that you know but we keep it among us so i think if when i leave aviation most importantly i will miss is the galley mm-hmm. the galley talks the jump seat talks the galley talks <laughs> oh yeah yeah that's <gasps> one of the one? things yeah if you're a crew you know it like the whole life is there it's like that you talk Absolutely. about so many things even when i left indigo i missed it a lot i think that's a positive change with this uh, airbus a trade that we have now you know we're yeah. gonna fly with the same crew and then you know you're like oh i know i know her i know him you know it's like you have friendships kind of situations and it's it's nice it just yeah. feels refreshed because mostly we fly with people that we don't really know yeah we fly with strangers all the time and um you know at least you know how you are as a person yeah, exactly and how you, you like to be you like it to be yeah how you, you like know, to work exactly exactly i think it makes a difference indeed all right so one thing that i wanted to ask you as well how did your family react when you first said that you want to become a cabin crew did they support you my family is super supportive that's in great. Whatever I want to do, they are super supportive. So they were excited for me, to be That's honest. That's great. My, even my father flew to Abu Dhabi for my graduation. Wow. So they're super supportive. Like, whatever aspect, because they really trust me. And I, I am a good child. I kept their trust, to be honest. And they have actually always, they have let me take my own decisions. My mom is like, if you do not take the wrong decisions in your life, you will... You know, you will not learn what is right and what is wrong for you. So when when you are older and you take a wrong decision, that's bad. Rather, you take a wrong decision at a very early age and you learn from it. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's always they have been very supportive. They're excited for me, to be honest. When I say I'm here, they're like, oh, really? Send me pictures. And so, yes, they're very supportive. Wow. I, I, it's, it's, it's a tough to get it in Indian family, to be honest. Because things yeah. are more traditional, generally. Yeah, they would more, you know. Protective, I guess, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're a little bit more of that. I'm happy to hear that. Um, same with my family. Yeah. Although my mom is telling me often, like, hey, Alex, when do you come back home? Oh. You know, like. Like forever, much? forever? Yeah. <laughs> yeah like when, How long when, for you in Etihad? Yeah, seven years now. Oh, my God. It's quite something, yeah. It's quite something. How do you feel about it? I feel okay. Like, I'm at a point in which I'm cruising. Ah. I'm just cruising through the job and through the life. Um, I do enjoy it. I do feel a bit more tired. Like, I do feel it it kind of piles up, you know, the the tiredness, the night flight, so on and Mm -hmm. so forth. And I've talked about this on the channel quite a lot. But um, at the same time, it's, it's still okay, you know. Like, it's fine. It's not bad. I still enjoy my life, which is the most important thing. Exactly. 
and but um, you know as a fly like as a crew i feel like you don't really miss it when you are in it and you start missing it when you are not in it like absolutely if i go home when i go like if i'm not flying for 15 days i feel like something is missing out of my life like something is there so yeah i empathize with that um <laughs> sometimes when you don't have the thing that you had for a long time exactly you do not value it correct to be honest so w- once you lose it you start valuing it it's for life it's not for a job but it's for life even people in our life people in our life exactly we do not value them you know i have i have been a very lovable person to a lot of people and they did not value me later on they realize it and maybe it's too late for mm-hmm. them. what you have in your hand is you don't get because you already have it that's true and on this note we shall end the video here we shall end the podcast here but uh yeah so just me thank you so much for participating on this video and uh, please let me know in the comment section down below ladies and gents what do you think about it po- this podcast of course you can follow her on her personal instagram that will be in the link below or rather in the tag let's see <laughs> yeah. and um any final thoughts what do you uh, say to the people following what do you say to new joiners people that want to travel any any thoughts any advices this is one of the best job that you can gift yourself to to be honest because okay. you grow as a person at the end of the day i feel so if you are really keen of traveling and uh, learn new cultures learn from people like i am learning so much from you it's like you have a different culture so yes. if you're really interested in that i think this is your place and You should give it a try because it's not for everyone at the end of the day. Take good care everybody. Thank you. Until Bye. next time.